Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and over there we have John Lundgren. Hi, John. Hey. How's everything going? You're kind of blurry over there. Little blurry, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, everything seems good. I can hear you. I can partially see your background a little bit. It keeps going. <laughs> but hey. uh, anyway, um. First off, uh, before we get into our sponsors and everybody, I wanted to thank the people who supported us and put the si the person who put a sign in their front yard with John, the photo John made. We wanted to say thank yeah. you. And thank you. To all the fans that brought him back to game tonight. Um, however, I wouldn't bring him back for tomorrow. Or um, if you're going to do it, um, I don't know. But... Uh, um, Let's, uh, let's talk about this game a little bit. Before we do that, please check out our sponsor, Hockey, Ugh. Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. Or if you need any info about Hockey Locker and what they can provide you, you can visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. All right, enough with that uh, of our sponsors. Let's get into the YouTube. Please uh, subscribe to us over here on, over there on YouTube. And uh, like and follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, you name it. You will be able to find us all at From Milwaukee to Nashville. There are two of them. You can follow two Twitters. Uh, they're both me and John. So you'll get yeah. the news from somebody. Um, we are normally pretty much on top of it. The first thing we do when we go wake up in the morning is look at hockey news. So, mm -hmm. Or at least that's the first thing I do. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the first thing I do that and drink a soda but uh <laughs> um the first period was kind of uh ew, period it, it really was they were being beat to the puck they were being out hustled outworked outsmarted and you can't have games like that in the playoffs right you just can't um you know and and you know you got to stay out of the box. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you cannot give South Carolina any chances on the power play when they're no. hungry. Right. And 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 with that, um I mean, they only had two penalties, but you had five power play opportunities and did nothing. Right. The power play. Their first goal was scored on the power play. And and it did seem ominous every time the Everblades had um, some kind of offensive pressure. They would come back down, and as they were coming back down, a penalty would be called. Right. It it was kind of one of those weird ones. Yeah. Um, uh, scoring in the first was Andrew Churbachan with an assist by Max Gottlieb and Matthew White. That was on the power play. Um, that goal in particular, I mean, nothing Hild Hildebrand could do. All right. I mean, they passed the puck cleanly. He, he really didn't stand a chance. Not with the way that they were playing. They were getting beat to every position. Right. It almost looked like they were tired, which would explain that. Be. I, I mean, it is a five-game series, so now you let them burn your tank, the tank because you know you have a game that you could go – Okay, we'll 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 reserve a little tonight and come back at it tomorrow, hopefully getting a good night rest, and we'll be right. more energetic than they are because they have to fight for their chance. Right. So I mean it does it is a little bit of a chess game, but at the same time, you can't do that in the playoffs. No. Not in a five game no. series. No. Because what if they catch you sleeping tomorrow in a weird wet sense, you know. Um, and then scoring at the 12.02 mark was Mark Cooper with an assist from Dan DeSalvo and Cole Yuli. Yet again, they were outworked to the puck, beat to the puck. They passed it around perfectly, set up their plays, and scored. Yeah. I mean, John saw me in our ch game chat where I'm literally just saying, stop turning the puck over. Yeah. Make better passes. You're getting beat to the puck. I'm literally just like, eh, eh, stop, stop. You know, and and I was on the phone 
Robert as well and, and, and telling him about it. And he was, he was, he was agreeing with when I was saying that they were putting the puck up the boards, up the boards from behind the net and around. And when you do that, if there's a guy in between your guy and and where you are, you don't do that. You go to the other side. Right. But they had two guys pinching on each side. So your best bet is to take the puck up, try and get one to come in and then pass. Right. But that's not what they were doing. It, it was really like frustrating to an extent because we were, we were, I was watching it and, you know, and it was kind of quiet in Florida, but South Carolina did come in keep in, in quiet him real quick with, with another goal by Andrew Churvachan. Um and at the 1331 mark of the first um uh, uh with an assist from Zach Malatesta and Caleb Herbert. And I don't know how to say this, but in the second period, game kind of slipping away from you. Who else steps up but Alex Kyle? All right. Alex Kyle has had a phenomenal season and an even better playoffs, uh, except for Lee Kilcoper. Cooper had leads the uh, playoffs in goals with five. Uh, Kyle had three now. Right. And that was assisted by Zach Berzola and Michael Hinsenbreaker. And it feels like a while since I've said his name. Uh, with, well, good job there, Hunty, getting on the uh, score sheet for the first time in a while. I have not seen him all that much this year. My on, the, on the stat sheet since about mid-March. Um, and then in uh, scoring a uh, in, in uh, their fourth goal of the game was uh, Mark Cooper. Cooper was unassisted. Um, shots in the second were thirteen to seven. They got outworked. And, uh, Florida outworked them, but didn't get the results. Right. In the third period, more of the same. South Carolina just beating them all the way to the pocket all all night. Right. Except for Florida did try to fight back a little bit with Mighty Joe Pendenza. Um, with an assist from Stefan LeBlanc and Logan Rowe. Like we were, I was saying earlier, it is a bit of a, a, a slight issue when you have those. Now, in that start the game was Jake Hildebrand. He left at the 32-22 mark of the game, stopping 8 of 12. Um, and Cooley stopped 14 of 14. Thank you. So, Cooley... Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe Hildebrand needs a break. Maybe you try Cooley. Right. Maybe, maybe they don't have the scouting book on Cooley enough. And and Cooley, Cooley, I wanted to give him some credit, some love here, because Cooley, at one point in time, Pendenza and, and Hebig were working out some kind of play that they were doing and kind of went yeah. like this. And had a meeting of the minds, and they both went to the ice and ended up a two-on two on goalie. To a nun. Yeah. And yeah. and uh Cooley stopped him. So with that, I, I mean I give Cooley a lot of love for that because this could have been a five one game. Right. With, with, with the way it was going. Now I don't know the extent of what's going on with Hildebrand. Maybe he's just running fatigue. I mean, he did play pretty much every game the last month. Right. So maybe it's just a little bit of fatigue. I, I don't know. You're, I mean, remember, you're playing a three and three. So now you gave him a little bit of time off. Yeah. Let's see how he feels coming into the rink tomorrow. And and, and we go from there. Um, yeah. And further note, uh, we have some uh, new stuff dropping tomorrow um, evening. Uh, we're going to try and get that done tomorrow evening. Um. And uh, we will uh, be seeing you guys then. Um, me and John both have uh, some family stuff going on. It is uh, 7.45 where we are, so we have just enough time to, to do that and still be productive tomorrow.
All right. So uh, we're going to go spend the rest of our uh, weekend with our family. I hope you guys enjoy your time with, this, with what's left of your weekend with your families. Yes. Um, uh, also, uh, I made a post. We have a ranking video coming out soon in the next couple weeks. And uh, we're going to be uh, doing those. Um, we're letting you, the fans, choose over on Facebook. It is the reverse retros for the NHL. The AHL Arenas or the ECHL home jersey. We are going to rank them from our favorites to least favorite. And we are going to uh, break them down and, and, and get it together. So, with that yeah. being said, uh, please go over to Facebook or comment on our video tonight on these. Um, and uh, we will uh, kind of tally them up as of. Sunday of next week, and we will announce what we're doing first. It will be released after, they will be done after the Kelly Cup playoffs, if no. the Upper Blades move on. If they do not, we are, our plan is to take a week to two weeks. No. Um, we will be doing our breakdown still, but as far as news and stuff like that, you just look for the posts. We're going to just be sharing posts. Uh, we're going to take some time away to spend some time with family. We're going to be doing one video a week, which is our breakdowns. That'll be all we get got for you uh, during our off season until we start doing our ranking videos right before the draft. All right. So we will be seeing you guys then. Talk to you all later. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Dan Gemma over there. Uh, uh -huh. There. Um, uh, ah, I don't know what side he's on anymore. Uh -huh. There's John Lundowski. See you all later. Uh-uh.